Welcome to the Columbus Recruiting Battalion's 2010 Open Forum. I'd like to introduce today's panel. To your far left is Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Caron, commander of the Columbus Recruiting Battalion. He is responsible for leading the six recruiting companies and 27 recruiting stations that cover mid to southern Ohio, parts of West Virginia, and northern Kentucky. To his left is Command Sergeant Major Charles Pulliam, the senior non-commissioned officer in the recruiting battalion. To his left is Captain Scott Lee, the Columbus Company Commander. To his left is Sergeant First Class Chad Wasileski, the Zanesville Station Commander. To his left is Staff Sergeant Shane Prazler, a recruiter for the Westerville Station. And to his left is Sergeant Jennifer Dulac, a recruiter for the Newark Station. First to speak today is the Battalion Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Karen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Again, my name is Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Karen. I'm the Columbus Recruiting Battalion Commander. Ladies and gentlemen, bottom line up front is, in fiscal year 10, the U.S. Army achieved this mission with flying colors. Congress and the American people asked the U.S. Army to put in over 74,500 active duty soldiers and over 17,000 U.S. Army Reserve soldiers. We achieved this goal. We put in 74,577 active duty soldiers. We also put in 17,046 reserve soldiers. So we achieved this goal for fiscal year 10. Not only did the U.S. Army achieve its goal for fiscal year 10, but they did it while at the same time putting in over 99% of high school graduates. This is the first time that we have achieved this goal of 99% since 1992. And again, looking ahead to fiscal year 11, we have already put in 33,000 enlistees for our future soldier pool. So it's looking very strong for fiscal year, fiscal year 11. Now, a lot of this work and hard work and dedication is due to the, our great soldiers, civilians, and contractors that we have on our team here in recruiting. We have done exceptionally well in fiscal year 10, and we look forward to do exceptionally well in fiscal year 11. And the way things are looking right now, we don't see any reason why we should not. Now, a lot of this uh, has been said it's due to the economy but that's not necessarily true. The economy does play a role in it, but the bottom line is the Army provides great opportunities for young men and women in, the, in, in America. We've done extremely well in providing opportunities, and, thing, and, and soldiers have done very well in ensuring that the young people of America know what the opportunities are. So with that, I would like to pass it on to Command Sergeant Major Pulliam uh, for an opportunity for him to uh, share some thoughts and views. Command Sergeant Major. Good morning. My name is Command Sergeant Major Pulliam. I am the Senior List Advisor to the Battalion Commander for Columbus Recruiting Battalion. I would like to highlight some of the achievements of the battalion recruiters and announce that fiscal year 2011 will be the Recruiting Command's year of the Station Commander. Some of 2010 achievements, we had First Sergeant Henson, First Sergeant of the Year. Sergeant First Class Graves, Station Commander of the Year. Staff Sergeant Bormeyer was a regular Army Recruiter of the Year. Sergeant First Class Smith, he represented the battalion as United States Army Reserve Recruiter of the Year. Staff Sergeant Smales was the NCO of the Year. Staff Sergeant Smales was also inducted into the Artie Murphy Club. Staff Sergeant Taylor was the end of the year, but he got hurt, so he wasn't able to represent the battalion at brigade. The runner-ups for the brigade was First Sergeant, uh, Sergeant First Class Graves and Staff Sergeant Smales. With this being the year of the station commander, I would like to thank all the station commanders in advance for what you do each and every day. Proud to be your command, Sergeant Major. I will be followed by Captain Lee, the company commander for the Columbus Recruiting Company. Good morning. My name is Captain Scott Lee, and I'm the company commander for Columbus Army Recruiting Company. One of the benefits that I have of being the Columbus Recruiting Company commander and it being the 14th largest city in the country is the social, economic, and cultural diversity that comes with it. A lot of parts of Ohio, you really don't see too much uh, 
cultural or economic diversity that I have here. Uh, I roughly have 74% Caucasian, 16% African American, and the rest being made up of Hispanic, Asian, Pacific Islander. And I get, I get the opportunity to recruit these different people in our, our diverse army. This is the most diverse, technically proficient, and educated army that this world has ever seen. And I have the honor of recruiting the finest of America's sons and daughters into that force. And now I'd like to introduce Sergeant First Class Wasileski. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, my name is uh, Sergeant First Class Chad Wasileski. I'd like to thank you for attending this morning. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about the Montgomery GI Bill for the active duty Army and the Montgomery GI Bill and Army Reserve Kicker uh, as student loan repayment for the Army Reserves. As uh, our young people uh, go to enlist into the United States Army, there are many options that are available to them, one of those being the Montgomery GI Bill for the active duty and the reserves. Uh, the active duty also has an additional kicker with it, which is the Army College Fund, and then we have the select Montgomery GI Bill reserve kickers and student loan repayments for both as well. Uh, as far as uh, amounts go for these, uh, with your curiosity, you might ask, what do soldiers make nowadays if they go into the active duty army uh, for college money? Uh, for the active duty army, the amounts vary with the amount of enlistment and depending on the MOS that they fill and the number of years of obligation that they fill. For a two-year enlistment, the Montgomery GI Bill uh, is a contribution of $1,200 and then a Re, uh, a repayment for the government contribution, which starts out at 39000 for a two-year enlistment and goes all the way up to 49248 for four-, five-, and six-year enlistments. Uh, likewise, with the Army Reserve, the Army Reserve GI Bill starts out with uh, 11444 in compensation for a six-by-two-year enlistment uh, and a less... Uh, a less stipend uh, for a, a three by five year uh, enlistment. The, st the student loan repayment uh, can be opted for in lieu of the Montgomery GI Bill and the Army Reserve. The student loan repayment for the active duty Army is upwards of $65,000. And um, like I said, uh, when I mean it, what I mean by in lieu of the uh, uh, GI Bill is that the, upon enlistment, the applicant must choose whether they want to exercise the option to have the Montgomery GI Bill or the student loan repayment. So what we do as recruiters is we try to find what best suits that applicant, talk to them about their needs uh, and their financial well-being, and then try to help them with any options that may be available to them. Uh, with the Army Reserve, they also have the opportunity to take the option of the student loan repayment. However, the difference being is that uh, with an enlistment into the United States Army Reserve, they can do that in, in conjunction with a student loan repayment. So there is a major difference between the active duty uh, uh, student loan repayment and the reserve student loan repayment. In addition to that, we have what are called kicker amounts. Uh, if the applicant meets certain criteria based on MOS and the number of years that they are obligated to serve, um, they may be entitled to additional college fund money for the active duty and additional college fund money for the uh, United States Army Reserves. Uh, those monies uh, start at the three, four, and five and six year uh, enlistments for the active duty and the six by two enlistment for the United States Army Reserve. The maximum amount that can be earned for the United States Army active duty is, bear with me one second, 83,000, correction, 83,448, I was right, 80, 83,448 and the maximum amount um, for the uh, U.S. Army Reserve component it would be uh, 24588 The Montgomery GI Bill and, uh, is paid out in uh, a 36-month uh, payment plan in which if the student is enrolled for a full term of 12, or excuse me, uh, 12 consecutive credit hours, uh, which is considered full-time, that will be paid over a 36-month period as long as that student is enrolled in full-time uh, status. Uh, those, those amounts will vary significantly based uh, on the number of years uh, that they have remaining on their contract and the number of years that they uh, have signed up for, depending on their, their, their amount um, of stipend. Uh, additional uh, incentives that can be uh, enlisted for um, is, also, is the, uh, the select 
uh, bonuses. Um, every MOS is going to be different with the amount of bonus money that the applicant qualifies for. Uh, with the United States Army Reserve, they have a maximum of a $10,000, excuse me, a $20,000 uh, signing bonus, and that may be eligible to be combined with the student loan repayment and the Army College Fund, and the select uh, bonuses for the active duty is a maximum of 40000 and they may be combined with the college fund and the student loan repayment as well. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention, and um, any additional uh, information can always be found at GoArmy.com. This is a, a living document, these, uh, these benefits for the Montgomery GI Bill, and they are always subject to congressional approval. So if you ever have any questions, please visit GoArmy.com. I'll be followed next by Sergeant Praisley. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Staff Sergeant Praisler. I'm a recruiter for the Westerville Recruiting Station. Today I'm going to be addressing different issues on um, actual Army enlistment incentives. Um, the, the United States Army is the largest technical firm in the world. Regular Army or active duty is full of uh, full-time career in the Army and offers over 150 jobs to choose from. Uh, some of the great options the U.S. Army offers are training of choice. Uh, we are the only branch of service that allows uh, you to choose your career and incentives uh, based off the qualifications and availability of the jobs. Uh, you will have the ability to choose your training and to be able to see your contract on paper before you actually go to MEPS and swear in. Uh, your reservation will show your training path as well as incentives that you will receive. Uh, for those who qualify, some MOSs may offer up to uh, option 40, which is airborne training, um, if it is available at the time. Airborne training is a three-week course uh, to become a paratrooper. Uh, this course teaches soldiers the techniques involved in parachuting uh, from airplanes and the use of parachutes as a means of combat deployment. This also helps develop leadership and self-confidence. Uh, those who qualify in some MOSs uh, may offer assignment to Ranger units. Uh, you may be able to receive option four, which is Ranger School. Ranger School is one of the toughest training schools for soldiers to volunteer for. Rangers are experts and in leading soldiers on difficult missions. To do this, Rangers go over two months of rigorous training. The purpose for Ranger School is to prepare volunteers, both officer and enlisted, in combat arm-related function skills. We also offer Special Forces training. Soldiers who want to participate in Special Forces may sign a letter of intent um, in conjunction with their initial contract. Special Forces is an elite military organization that employs specialized elements to accomplish specifically directed missions in time of peace and war. Those who qualify offer, uh, we also offer off officer candidate school in conjunction with Warren Officer Flight Training as well. Officer Candidate School provides an opportunity for college graduates who desire a challenging management position in one out of 16 career fields. Officers are the Army's leaders. They plan training and lead soldiers all over the world. The Warren Officer Flight Training path is for soldiers who have determined to become an aviator. Uh, the Army can make this happen Warrant officers employ pilots for Black Hawk helicopters, Chinook helicopters, Kiowa warriors, and Apache helicopters, which are some of the most exciting, technologically advanced aircraft anywhere on combat, rescue, and reconnaissance missions. You'll gain these piloting skills in the Warrant Officer Flight Training Program. The Army Reserves are unlike active duty because after training you will drill one weekend a month and two weeks a year. The Army Reserves has 120 jobs to choose from. The options available for the Army Reserves are the standard training program. In this program, this is where you will finish basic training and begin advanced individual training immediately. Upon training, you will return and reserve drill with your reserve, reserve unit. Alternate training is the other option, and this is an initial entry training split between two time periods. Usually, summers are the time that they choose to split their training pass, and it is usually uh, separated by one, t one year of a time period. This enables students to continu continue high school and college studies. The training is only authorized for AITs that are typically 13 weeks or less. The last program that the Army Reserves offers is the Education Career Stabilization Program. This is also known as ECS. This program applies to non-prior service um, standard training path only. Uh, this provides the opportunity for soldiers to serve in the United States Army Reserves and complete up to a four-year degree. Applicants who enlist will be stabilized up to 48 months upon completion of their training. This exempts soldiers from current mobilization authorities only pertaining to Operation Iraqi Freedom. Uh, this does not exempt them from new federal mobilization under presidential authority. At this time, I would like to introduce Sergeant Dulac. Good morning. 
My name is Sergeant Jennifer Dulac. I'm an Army recruiter with the U.S. Army Recruiting Station in Newark, Ohio. I'm here to talk to you today about the benefits that the Army and the Army Reserves uh, can provide you with. First benefit I'm going to talk about is military pay. In the active duty Army, you're going to get full-time pay. For E1, which is the entry-level position, uh, for enlistment, you will get $1,447.20 a month. That is before taxes. Um, for the Army Reserves, you will receive $193 a month since you are only working for two days. You will be doing drill assembly with your reserve unit once a month. The second benefit I'm going to talk about is medical benefits. In the Army, in the regular Army, you're going to receive full medical and dental at no charge to you with no copays and free prescriptions. In the reserves, you will receive the opportunity to get TRICARE at very low cost to you. It's approximately $40 a month for a single soldier. Housing for active duty Army will be provided for you at no cost to you. All of your utilities will be covered and you will either have a roommate in the barracks or you will have an apartment for you and your spouse. For the Army Reserves, housing will not be covered for you. Um, retirement, you will have a full retirement at 20 years for the Reserves and for active duty. Um, a few other things that are nice to have when you're on an active duty post are the PX, which is the post exchange. Um, there's a lot of low-cost goods for soldiers, and um, the commissary as well is kind of like a grocery store. The last thing that I would like to talk about is the PAYS, which is the Army's Partnership for Youth Success. And basically what that is, is it is a guaranteed job interview um, for a job in any area of the country of your choice once you either get out of the Army, the regular Army, or come home from training with the Army Reserves, it gives you the opportunity to interview with that company so that you also have a job as well as go to college and use your Army Reserve money to your advantage. Thank you, that's all I have today. Once a high school junior or senior enlists in the Army, while waiting to attend basic combat training, they are referred to as future soldiers. Because today is a school day, they cannot be here. So instead, we have a video that was shot last summer that shows future soldiers explaining why they enlisted into the United States Army. I'm joining the Army because I want to be the prettiest private. But actually, it's because I want to build character, like leadership skills. It's a good opportunity to get to go places and get education and make you stronger. You become a totally different person. The reason that I joined the Army is because I want to travel and see how different cultures live. Uh, I joined the Army because I was working a dead-end job that I did not like and the Army has better opportunities and a better future for me. It will help me build a character, teamwork skills, stuff like that. To, uh, teach me how to push myself to my limits to make myself better. I joined the Army because I wanted a better lifestyle and to get out of the hood. I uh, want to be a cameraman to learn how to just use the cameras and then hopefully after I get out do uh, TV for sports or weather or something like that. Pretty cool. You know, I thought about joining the Army for a long time, and I finally decided it was the right decision for me, and, you know, I wanted to take the next step in my life and get some leadership experience, things like that. I'm doing the Army to travel and get money for college. Uh, I want to be a part of something bigger than I am. It will uh, make me into a stronger person, uh, physically and mentally, and it'll help me grow up, in my opinion. <laughs> I joined the Army because I, I'm going to officer candidate school and I wanted to learn leadership skills. Uh, just job opportunity with the economy going bad, it, it's a good job. I joined the Army to see the world and uh, experience things I couldn't experience around home. I joined the Army to be a pilot because I love to fly. I joined the military because I love the discipline of it, it's family tradition, love the organization of it all. I joined the Army for the health benefits because I need them. That is like I got money for college, I get a career out of it. Retirement. I joined the Army so I could blow up stuff and not get in trouble for it. I joined the Army because I wanted to develop my leadership skills. I love my country. Wow. Die for it in a heartbeat. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the formal portion of our 2010 Open Forum. At this time, you may ask the panel any questions that you have about the Army 
or Army Recruiting Command. You've told us all the good stuff about the Army and your recruiting command, but what are the real problems that you're having in recruiting? And if the economy improves, do you think you'll be as successful? Why or why not? Well, I, I really think that the economy do play a small role in the success of recruiting uh, command right now. However, we have some great talent out there. We're doing some training uh, to get after uh, some of the issues that may, may become a problem in the future, such if the economy turns to the, you know, to the good side, uh, such as uh, training the year to station command would give them the opportunity to uh, do training at their level to develop the young recruiters at the, the Army Recruiting School. So once they come out here, they, they maintain the skill sets. We're throwing additional tests out there uh, through their tour that they can continue to grow and to develop as young recruiters. Uh, so in, in case the economy get better, I think the command is postured uh, for continued success. Uh, just to caveat a bit on what the, the Sergeant Major said, you know, when the, when the economy improves, that's, that's good for the country, obviously. That's the, we want the economy to improve. Uh, however, uh, like the Sergeant Major said, we are postured for when the economy does improve and young people do have uh, uh, more options. The Army is a great option, and I think that, that, ha that will not change. The Army continues to be a great option for both going to college and both having great life experiences and in leadership training. What does the Army offer a new recruit that the other services don't? The Army is the largest portion of our U.S. Armed Forces, and because of that reason, we get the largest congressional allocations to sustain and recruit for the force. Now, what I would do is encourage parents and potential applicants to go look at the other forces and to see if they can provide as many jobs, uh, number of job openings, and educational benefits that we can. I think they would be hard-pressed to find those anywhere outside of the Army. If a recruit gets injured in basic training, do they still, and gets discharged, do they still get to keep their educational benefits? That's actually an interesting question. If a soldier does happen to get injured during basic training, um, they are authorized their veterans' benefits, but it is always subject to a medical board, and um, it is also subject to whatever the findings of the board are due to the nature of the injury, whether it was a pre-existing injury or an injury that actually occurred during training. With the recent rise of suicides in the Army, what is the Recruiting Command doing to help eliminate suicides, and how are they preparing applicants to prepare them for what may happen to them when they come back from a war zone? Well, studies have shown that it's not, the issues aren't just with deploying soldiers, okay? And this is, again, this is not just an Army problem. It's not just a military problem. It's a national problem. And with that being said, though, United States Recruiting Command is meeting, is meeting this, this threat head on. What we've begun doing is we begin training our future soldiers in resiliency training. And also, we've also sat down with them and, and do counseling with the, uh, the future soldiers to ask those hard questions, to ensure that our future soldiers understand that, that we're here for them to talk to, even though they're not fully in the Army yet. We're here for them to, uh, to, to discuss issues if they have any issues. The Army's meaning this head on. They are not hiding from this issue and it will, uh, we will get this under control. How has the Iraq-Afghanistan wars affected recruiting? Thank you for asking that. Uh, the Afghani and Iraqi campaigns both, in my opinion, do not currently affect our operational environment out here in recruiting and here's why. Um, for eight years now we've endured this during an all-volunteer uh, Army where we've recruited both men and women into our armed forces and uh, the active duty and reserve components. They've already uh, assessed and made a decision uh, based off of what they know from their family members, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, friends that they know in the military, and they've already decided before they ever come and talk to recruiters uh, how they feel about the war and uh, the campaigns in both Af Afghanistan and Iraq. As we continue this operational environment that we've uh, maintained for eight years now, um, the, those numbers will uh, tend to remain strong, in my opinion, and I believe that our applicants will continue to make their own decisions uh, based off of what they know uh, in an ever-changing environment uh, that is fed by media and uh, the, the technology that, that advances this information so quickly. What determines what benefits a new recruit uh, gets when he actually enlists? There are actually three aspects that will determine what types of benefits you are eligible for. 
That is your score on the ASVAB, your physical qualifications, as well as your moral qualifications. Just to add to that, uh, being uh, mentally, physically, and morally qualified, and this also provided um, uh, uh, provided a vacancy exists because the Army is an organization that, you know, sometimes you want a particular job, but we overstrengthen that in that career field. So uh, it's always provided that a vacancy has to exist in order for you to qualify for the job. If somebody's trying to join the Army and they take that Army test, that military test, and they don't do so well, or if they fail it, can they retake it? And if so, how quickly? The only way that you can actually retake the ASVAB for purpose of enlistment is if you fail. You are not allowed to retake the ASVAB for purpose of enlistment or to raise your score. Now, if you do fail the ASVAB, you have 30 days waiting period before you can retake it again. If you fail it a second time, you have another 30 days. If you fail it again, you have a six month wait for each time that you want to take it again. How does the recent court ruling on don't ask, don't tell affect how you qualify applicants today? And also, are you going to continue to process an applicant if they openly admit that they are homosexual? Great question. Uh, right now, we are still in support of the don't ask, don't tell uh, mandated by Congress. And what that means to me, uh, 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 we're going to support the Constitution and the President. If things change, uh, we posture to, to uh, our soldiers are posture to treat people with dignity and respect. And as long as we continue to live the Army values and treat each other with dignity and respect, uh, whatever uh, Congress decides, we, we'll, we'll be uh, ready to take it on 100%. It seems like the Army offers a lot of money to kids for quote unquote educational purposes, for going to school while they're in or once they get out. Uh, is that not like preying on kids that can't afford to go to college? Can you respond to that? That's a great question. The Army is all about providing opportunities. And now if, clearly though, the Army is not for everybody. If, however, if a young person is propensed and wants to join the Army, the Army wants to ensure that they give that person every opportunity to go to college. Because it only benefits the Army when their soldiers are well-trained, well-educated, and well-read. It helps. It's a win-win situation. What's the quality of troops you're getting nowadays as compared to years past? Yes, sir. Uh, to, to comment uh, on the quality of an applicant or a quality of a recruit, uh, first of all, I always uh, thank my enlistees for making the choice to, to join the service. Um, any applicant that chooses to raise their hand, whether it be in the active duty or the reserves, uh, for any force, is a, is a tremendous asset to this country. Uh, as far as the quality, it's in the eye of the beholder, whether it uh, be test scores or whether it be uh, their work ethic or their moral or uh, in their character background. Um, so to make a fair assessment of an individual uh, and call them quality or not quality, um, I don't really care to do that. I, I will tell you this, one of the things that is different in applicants now than in years past is their ability to assess information and process it quickly. We've got one of the most advanced armies in the world, probably the premier army in the world, and that's due to the soldiers that, that serve in it. And these young people that are coming out here from 17 to, to 40 years old, they're able to process information at an unbelievable uh, speed. Um, they're able to uh, be flexible and, uh, and, and constantly changing in an ever-changing operational environment, whether deployed or back here in the States. So th the main thing that I see is as being a difference between uh, soldiers of years past and today is just the ability to adapt to information and change very, very quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of myself and Command Sergeant Major Pulliam and the soldiers from the Columbus Recruiting Battalion, I would like to thank you all for participating today. And at, at the conclusion, if you want to come up and talk to some of the soldiers, please feel free. Have a great Army Day.